The water in it is fine, but the mouthpiece, it froze. And so I can't, I can't drink out of it. So many times with that analogy, because the, the, the neck of it is so wide, if it starts to breathe in the inside, and you want to take a sip, and you just get like, you just deep throat this chug of ice, <laughs> it just slides right in. Like, you don't even see it coming. <laughs> I guess it's still affecting it. Yeah. The ice?
As, as soon as
This is TYSN, the Youth Sports Network. And this is the U14 Tier 1 Ontario Fall Football League Final at Championship from Tag Park and Keith Harris Stadium on the campus of Carleton University. Hi, everybody. Dan Mooney alongside Jesse Card. For this one, it's the Oshawa Hawkeyes against the Cumberland Panthers, two great football franchises. This is great to see. We're accustomed to seeing these two teams play in the summer leagues. So the OVFL back in the day, the Auto, uh, Ontario Provincial League, and now the, Auto, the Ontario Summer Football League. But we've never seen them at the municipal level match up like this. So I'm really excited. Well, they have uh, a, a great package. Uh, they look like the Toronto Argonauts coming in here with the double blue uniforms, the deep blue. The Cumberland Panthers uniforms, on the other hand, are a contrast. They're white jerseys with silver numbers. So if we have problems locating the names of some of these kids, you'll understand why once we get going. These two football teams, great quarterbacks, but they also revolve around great running backs. And for the Oshawa Hawkeyes, it's number one, David Nosa. Yeah, David Nosa, been able to see some, some of his plays uh, online in preparation of this game. They give this kid the ball a lot, and, and clearly there's a reason. He is just a, a big back. He's tall. He's super athletic, and he's going to make a lot of defenders miss today, especially with the, the field slick the way that they are. The Cumberland Panthers are going to have to grab cloth to bring this kid down. On the Cumberland side, their big back, number eight, Gavin Poirier. Gavin, coming out of the NACAFA championship, um, really just rising to the occasion in, the, in that venue and in that game, uh, has really solidified himself as a top running back in the province, especially at this, at this U14 level. And uh, somebody that I think that the Cumberland Panthers are going to rely on a lot. However, they do have a lot of weapons on offense, Cumberland do, so look for them to try to spread the ball around early on in this game. Well, they'll try to spread the ball around, but again, putting the ball in the air is going to be a really difficult proposition for both of these teams, given the fact that patterns are going to be different because of the footing. The, the conditions are inclement, to say the least. Uh, the fields are hard and packed and slippery. Uh, we've had uh, several kids go down as a result of the conditions of the field, but this is football. You play it wherever, you know, however it's presented to you. Well, I think in terms of getting yourself excited and hyped for a game, it's not gonna be too hard today. They've been driving Oshawa, this is all the way down from Toronto to come to Ottawa. They've been watching the broadcast since 9 a.m., they say, they wow. told me. So they're watching this, they're getting ready, they know that it's being shown, people are seeing it, and they definitely want to put a good performance forward, not only for them as individual athletes in their early on in their career and their development, but also you know, to bring home a championship to Oshawa or to Cumberland in this case. In this case, for sure. Uh, the Oshawa Hawkeyes only arrived in the nation's capital just an hour and a half ago from Oshawa. I wonder, the 401 must have been an absolute mess. That's where the snow's coming from, they tell us, and uh, there's just so much great football happening across this province uh, uh, today. And, you know, this game, uh, hopefully we're going to end this, you know, fall football season on a high note with a really great game with two high-powered teams. Indeed. The referee in this one is Malcolm Bruce. Al Chaffee is the umpire. Sean O'Sullivan, the line judge, the down judge. Colin McAnulty. The back umpire, Andre Papano, and Justin Andrews is the back judge for this one. And you know, they got a full crew for the U14s. This is a big game, not only for the players, but also for the officials as well. Well, there's been a big focus too. Like we all know, and you've been around sports your whole life, Dan, you know that the, the treatment and kind of the attitudes around officials is uh, probably ha hasn't gotten better over the years. And really there's a push, I know, from Football Ontario and Football Canada to to kind of refocus and realign everyone on the fact that this is the officials are just as big a part of this game as, as any player or any coach, right? They say, if the officials aren't here today, it's just a scrimmage. Yep.
getting set to get this one underway. Isaac Kalubi Lucchini. Getting set to kick it away. Here's the kick, and it's a good line drive kick. Taken all the way, Gavin Luberis has it now for the Cumberland Panthers, and he gets outside. Here's Luberis. Luberis with a great run back, finally pushed out of bounds by the kicker, Isaac Kalubi Lucchini, but a great return by Garvin Luberis to give the Cumberland Panthers wonderful field position to start this football game at the Oshawa 53 yard line. Besides returning it all the way for a touchdown, is there a better way to start the game? This kind of kick starts the game for the Cumberland Panthers. First and 10, let's see what their offense dials up here. Vincent Anderson is a quarterback for the Cumberland Panthers. The big running back, number eight, Gavin Poirier. Anderson in the shotgun, has to take it himself. He's wrapped up immediately at the line of scrimmage by number 62, Riley Godina. And it'll be second down for Cumberland. A little bit of a broken play there, I think. Yeah, it, looked, it didn't look good right from the start. So that's okay. They, they get away without any kind of major mistake. And they live to see another day. Now they live to see another down. It'll be second in about uh, 12 yards down. Second down, nine yards to go. The give to Poirier, straight arm in there. Flag at the line of scrimmage. Quickly wrapped up, Poirier was by number 52, Anderson De Silva on behalf of the Oshawa Hawkeyes. And we'll have to wait and see what the call is. Offside or illegal procedure offside against Oshawa. The Cumberland Panthers will definitely take that penalty and it will be second down repeated seven yards to go <laughs> excuse me <clears throat> Just clearing my throat here getting ready for another game <laughs> so second down manageable uh you know about seven long seven yards here they've got uh, quite a few weapons like i said so look for something maybe uh, a little uh, little stop pass or a, a quick hook and Anderson's going to follow Poirier. Anderson has the first down and a couple more. The pickup is 10 for Vincent Anderson and the first first down of the football game goes to the Cumberland Panthers. There you go. So new set of downs. They've uh, you know, tested the perimeters on both sides of the field here. Oshawa's held tight though. They're making him earn it. First down, 10 yards to go from the Oshawa 41. Here's the give once again to Poirier, tries to get off the left side, he does. He gets around the corner and Poirier turns the corner, gets down the sideline and he's in for the touchdown. Wow, what a stride on this kid. 41 yards. And Gavin Poirier gives the Cumberland Panthers a 6-0 lead. Now we talked about it, Dan, at the start. You know, this defense is going to have to key on this kid. But I don't know how you stop that type of run when the lanes are, are, are being provided by the offensive line like that. They give him a good, good path. They clear it. And then his speed is just unmatched. Touchdown coming at the 220 mark of the opening quarter. Cumberland leading 6 0. And the extra point to come. The ball is down, the kick is up, and it is good. 7 0 for Cumberland. So the snow is starting to come down a little bit heavier now. They're big, fluffy snowflakes. This just adds to the, dr the, drama you know, the dramatic nature of this game. Seven nothing, and now we get to see 
what the Oshawa Hawkeyes can come up with offensively. A little bit of wind at their back, if you're judging by the way the snow is falling. Well, they've got Noosa back there returning, so if I were the Cumberland Panthers, I'd make sure that I'm not kicking it over to him. I'd make sure that maybe kind of a squib kick, middle of the field, second line, let them just jump on the ball and let's play defense. David Nosa is wearing number one for Oshawa in blue. Cumberland in white with silver numbers that nobody can see. Waiting for the kick. And it's away. Taken by number 10, Ryan, Ryland Goff Lambert. And he gets out to around the 40 yard line and that's where the Oshawa Hawkeyes will start first down 10 yards to go with their first offensive possession of this championship football game. Well, you know that the Cumberland Panthers have been scouting this team all week, the last couple weeks maybe. Well, no, last week they found out Oshawa is gonna be in this game. So they've been looking at this. They're gonna be keen on number one. So as, a, as an offense, I wonder if you're gonna be able to play to that advantage and maybe go somewhere else early on. Gavin Poria, you see him on the left of your screen wearing number eight, going both ways for the Panthers here. At least, in the early going of this first quarter. Trent Seaton is the quarterback, wearing number five. And flags fly. So it's a legal procedure against Oshawa. It'll go back, it'll be first down 15 yards to go from the 35. Now Oshawa's game to, you know, the, the, the opponent they defeated to get into this game, Dan, was the Burlington Stampeders. And that game came right down to the end um, with the Stampeders kind of threatening. So they've been in big games. They've been in close games. So I don't think they're going to be gun shy of this team. Seaton sets up, throws, completes that to Goff Lambert. And he cuts back inside and gets back to maybe the line of scrimmage, depends on where they spot it. No, it'll be a loss of two. And second down, 17 yards to go. So this is a situation that you don't want to have to get into early, this early in the game is a second and 17. This just makes, this puts a great challenge on the offense to, uh, to convert. So, you know, I think Getting out of this and, and making sure that the field position isn't too bad when they, they give the ball back is, is kind of the goal here for the Oshawa Hawkeyes at this point. Here's Seaton. The give to Nasso. Or no, David Nosa. And Nosa wrapped up in the backfield. And it looks like a punting situation here for the Oshawa Hawkeyes. Nosa tried to get to the outside unsuccessfully, but there might be an infraction here. Offside against Cumberland. So they'll uh, they'll do it again. Yeah, repeat the down. I don't think it'll change. Uh, yeah, it'll be second down still, so. So Hawkeyes back on the ball. Second down, 11 yards to go from their own 38. Seaton in the shotgun. The give to Nosa. Nosa goes off the right side, keeps his legs going, but the Panthers' defense, relentless, will not allow Nosa to get anywhere near the 45 yard line. And it looks like it'll be third down, so the Hawkeyes are sending their punting unit out. So they stood him up in the hole there. That was nice, nice job by the team to rally, rally at the tackle and, and, and stop Noosa. But you can tell just the way that he kind of cut through that defense. He's going to be a load. He's going to be hard to handle. Again, Isaac Kalubi Lucchini sets up to kick, gets it away, taken at the 30. And here's Labares once again, gets around the outside. Labares 
Labarez trying to get away from Lucchini, forced out of bounds. Another big run back by Garvin La Luberes, and wow, this kid can turn on the Jets. Kid's got wheels. They're getting another look at it here. There's the punt. It's a pretty good punt. One bounce in his hands, and he just gets north-south right away. And yeah, like you said, Dan, this kid's got Jets. I'm surprised. That was a good, good job in a pursuit angle by the big man to get him out of bounds. So Cumberland looking for threat, looking to score once again, leading 7-0. There you see the clock, seven and change left to go here in the opening quarter. Anderson in the shotgun, loaded backfield. The give to Poirier once again, bounces off the left side, keeps the legs going for a pickup of maybe one, maybe two. Yeah, nothing doing in the... Uh right in the middle of that defense. We've got a few big D linemen, but uh, gap control is gonna be important because Cumberland likes to run it, run it in the middle here. But if Poirier can bounce out to the outside, we've seen just how dangerous he can be. No, he's a pretty big guy. He's, he's north-south. Um, he, you know, protects the ball really well, never gives it up. So, you know, he's not gonna, he's not gonna flashy, he's not gonna do any spin moves really, but he, he's gonna come at you right in, right in the middle. Anderson takes it himself. Play action to Poirier, forced out of bounds. And a good defensive play there to keep Vincent Anderson from picking up more than the four yards that he got on that exchange. Yeah, good fake and really good patience by uh, Anderson there to, to find the opening. A little bit of a stiff arm there and uh, good play. Nathaniel Jello there to make the tackle and force Anderson out of bounds. Third down, about seven to go. Cumberland going for it. Anderson in the shotgun. Trying to get some movement along the line of scrimmage to give to Poirier once again. And he's handled by Isaac Kalubi Lucchini again. No flags on the play and that will be a turnover. Nice play by Lucchini there. You know, he's the one that forced forced the uh, punt returner out of bounds too. So, you know, two two really great heads up plays by this, by this uh, Hawkeyes player. And uh, you know what? I think that's a pretty good uh, good start for the for the Oshawa team. Hold this Cumberland Panthers team to uh, to seven so far and take over on offense. Trent Seaton will want to be a little more successful on this possession. Goes right in under center. He's got Nosa with him. Here's the give to number ten. Ryland Goff Lambert once again flag at the line of scrimmage. And Goff Lambert again taken down behind the line of scrimmage. So we're gonna let the officials sort it out. So it's actually against it's against the Panthers here. And it's gonna give them first and five. So first down, five yards to go from their own 34-yard line. Seaton, low snap, picks it up, looks downfield for Goff Lambert. He's got it. Ryland Goff Lambert with a big play. 38 yards for Ryland Goff Lambert and a huge first down for the Oshawa Hawkeyes. And it's well covered. We're gonna see the replay here. He just runs right down the seam on a, on a nine route or whatever it is and he, and he goes up for the ball. So, but he's well covered. He, defender was in good position, but he goes up and he's just a better athlete in that play. Caden Dial there to make the stop. Seaton. On first down, another low snap goes right to David Nosa, and Nosa takes advantage, makes something out of nothing. Nosa to the outside, 
David Nosa finally pushed out of bounds around the four yard line. A flag is down. Wow, what a play. Now, Nosa's tr starting to show you what he's, what he's capable of doing when the play breaks down. This guy is just a natural athlete, a gifted athlete, and uh, he can do things like that. 34 yards on the pickup. Penalty, obviously, against the Cumberland Panthers for a hit late on Nosa as he was out of bounds. Yeah, and it's a close one, right? Like, you know, you got to make sure that you get that kid to the ground. So, um, it's a tough call. The indication from Malcolm Bruce was piling on. So the ball goes to the one yard line. First down goal to go for the Hawkeyes. They're looking to tie this thing up. Seaton in the shotgun. Again, another low snap. Broken play, Nosa picks it up and the Panthers are all over him. So they're gonna have to work on the exchange in the shotgun from center to quarterback. So when they get back to the sideline, I would be setting up the center and the quarterback and be working on this because if the shotgun's a big part of their, their offense, you know, they're gonna be forced very quickly to go under center and, and you know, you can't expect Noosa to just be picking up balls off the ground and doing something with it all day, right? Seaton in under center, another bad exchange, but Seaton has it and he's into the end zone, but play, the whistle had gone before the ball had been snapped, so. So that's why they called it down because Seaton went down, picked the knee, picked up the football with his knee on the ground. So the ball comes all the way back out to around the three yard line and it's third down. Yeah, this is uh, this is plaguing them in the early part of this game is the uh, the center quarterback exchange. Third down from the three. Third and goal to go. Oshawa, the give to Nosa. Nosa. Across the goal line. Is there an indication? I think he's got it. He's got it. So Noosa into the end zone for the touchdown. And with the convert to come, Oshawa trails 7-6. to six. So I'll have a look at this. This is a straight up uh, dive out of the shotgun. He does kind of read that there's a little bit of uh, opening there to his right. Just off the tackle and... He punches it in, makes no mistake. Gets Oshawa on the board. This touchdown comes at 944 of this opening quarter. The kick is up, and Goff Lambert puts it through. We're tied at seven. We are tied. So 2.16 left in the first quarter, Dan, and we got ourselves a tie ball game. 7-7. Seven, seven. These two football teams, the champions in their respective leagues. Cumberland Panthers have built a, a tremendously solid program in the east end of the city of Ottawa. And the Oshawa Hawkeyes have worked tremendously hard to get to this position. They look good coming in with the unis. The short kick. Ball is loose. And it may have been picked up. It looks as if it's Cumberland's ball. Yeah, they tried to trick him there with a quick little kick. 
And uh, it almost worked. It almost did. I like it. I like the call. Well, you don't want to give Garvin Luberis an opportunity to, to run something back. I hope they've learned. I hope they've learned. So first down, 10 yards to go. Offside against Oshawa. Declined. Uh, Cumberland Panthers take the football. First down, 10 yards to go from their own 42. Here's Anderson in the shotgun. And not a chance. This kid's a baller, Dan. Number 19, Stephen Blair, couldn't make a play, couldn't get away from the big number 66. So Keeney is just a force so far in this game. And uh, you know, this kid move for the size that he is, is very impressive. So a seven yard loss on the play. It'll be second down, 17 to go. Definite passing situation for the Panthers. And they give it to Poirier. Poirier wrapped up immediately in the backfield and Cumberland will kick the football away. So a, a great defensive series here for the Oshawa Hawkeyes. They, uh, they make a big play. They're getting some more penetration here. So I think they had a you know, quarter to, to, to fill each other out. And now Oshawa's defensive line is starting to, uh, to make its mark on this game. So on third down, the Panthers will kick the football away. Looking for the onside man, and that's exactly how they play it, a bad bounce. Scooped up nicely there by Goff Lambert once again. He gets out of bounds and maintains possession the Hawkeyes. Yeah, nice play there. They tried a little uh, to get that onside man behind the kicker, but uh, Oshawa covers that ball up, gives it back to their offense safely. You see the replay here. Nice job handling the ball there and getting to the sideline. So first down, 10 yards to go from the Cumberland 50. Look for the big play here, David Nosa. With a broken play, picked up 34 yards. Nosa gets the call this time, and he breaks through the left side of the line. Finally brought down there by number one, Caden Dial, after a pickup of eight. And it looked like he might have been juggling the ball a little bit because he looked a little hesitant when he was running there. I think he, you know, he had trouble handling it there, but finally kind of got it. Yeah, he was holding it a little bit. So that, that slowed him down probably a little bit on that play. The pickup is eight, it's second and two, Oshawa. So this will be the last play of the first quarter. Barring a penalty. Seaton in under center, another bad exchange. Seaton picks it up and he dropped to his knee once again to pick it up, so the play is called dead. So this is becoming a real problem for the Oshawa Hawkeyes. A lot of plays are being wasted here and you don't get too many opportunities in a championship game, so you really gotta figure a way around to clean this up. They'll switch ends and when we come back, It'll be third down and a long three for the Hawkeyes. It's seven apiece after 12, 15 minutes of play. Don't go anywhere, folks. We've got more of the 2022 OFFL Tier 1 Championship coming up.
Welcome back. Third down, three yards to go for the Oshawa Hawkeyes. As they try to keep this drive alive, the give to Nosa gets around the right side. Nosa has the first down, plus a whole lot more. About four more, and it'll be moving the sticks time as the Generals continue to move the football offensively. Yeah, nice, nice play by the defense to, to wrap them up. They got to, you know, bear hug him and rip him down to the ground. He's not an easy guy to bring down. So, pretty good job by this Panthers defense. First down, ten yards to go from the Cumberland 36-yard line. Nosa gets it and is nailed in the backfield immediately. Great play defensively. Number 46, Donovan Belil, there to make the tackle for Cumberland and put the Hawkeyes in a bit of a hole here. And we're gonna see a replay here. He just shoots the gap and goes low with a nice fundamental tackle at the, at the waist. Gets his head to the side. That's a beautiful defensive play by the Cumberland Panthers defense. Second down. 13 and a half to go. Out of the shotgun. It's Seaton. Good snap this time. Swings that one out to Goff Lambert. Ryland Goff Lambert trying to get to the outside and he's wrapped up quickly there. Great corner linebacker play once again by number 46, Donovan Belil, right there to make the tackle for Cumberland. And this will force. Oshawa into a decision. Do they go for it or do they kick it away and try and put Cumberland deep? You know what? I go for it if I'm, I'm from Oshawa. I think, you know, giving them the ball here as opposed to maybe, you know, get, getting them closer down, coughing, kicking them or something like that. I think we just go for it. You trust, you trust what you've gotten you here into this game and see what you can do. Third down, 13 yards to go. Here's Seaton looking deep. He's got his man, touchdown! What a play! Number 22, Zane McKenzie! Wow, what a play, what a rainbow pass. Put it right where it needed it to be. And he even faked it there. He's waiting, he's waiting. He's actually got two options on the sideline there. He goes for the deeper guy. And, oh, just a perfect pass. Great touch. 38 yards. The pass from Seaton to McKenzie, and it's now 13 7 for Oshawa with the convert pending. The ball is down, the kick is up, and it's no good. How large will that loom later? Well, we're starting to see some success on offense by both teams. You know, we're, we're early in the second quarter here, but I mean, that opens it up. That shows that they can they can take the top off the defense at, you know, at will here. So Cumberland's got to go back, you know, gather as a defense on the sideline and just talk about, you know, how they're keeping their eyes on the receivers and, and not getting, trying to get tunnel vision on the quarterback because that's now a real threat they've got to worry about. First reception of the ball game by Zane McKenzie and it goes into the end zone for a touchdown. Boy, that has given the Oshawa Hawkeyes a huge lift here at Tag Park. We got ourselves a ball game. So now Oshawa kicks it away. Isaac Kalubi Lucchini. Looks like they're bringing some guys over to the left side here. Trying to short kick. Everybody on the left side. Here's Lucchini, kicks that one into the middle. Loose ball, the Panthers just fall on it. So I like Oshawa's approach on the kickoffs. Um, you definitely don't want to kick it downfield and give their best player an opportunity to return it, especially with the slick field. Um, you know, bad things can happen. So I like the fact that they're, they're kicking it short and they're just trying to control that special team's play. Murdoch, there to 
pick up the loose ball and everybody doing everything they possibly can to stay warm right now. That's been a long day. I mean, these teams uh, haven't been out here all day like we have, but still, you know, it just makes things a little bit more difficult getting the body in the game, the game time when it's cold like this. Jacob Prisky wide left. Warrior in the backfield. He gets the call, the pitch from Anderson, Poirier. Nowhere, maybe a yard. A tough yard. That's a swarming defense on that play. They're rallying around the play, they're in good pursuit. And uh, running back for, for Cumberland's, uh, you know, he's gotta operate and, and get some tough yardage and tight spaces. Second down, 10 yards to go from their own 47. Cumberland Panthers trailing now by six. In the second quarter, 8.48 remaining in the opening half. Anderson flushed out of the pocket, leaks it out to the right side, and a big hit there. A high tackle. Some might think it's a high tackle by Roland Goff Lambert once again. You can't work against that guy. He's too good everywhere. I was going to say, it kind of looked like it could have been called, but it was close. And uh, good job by Anderson, though, just kind of finding something, right? He's going to his second, maybe third read there on that play and still got a completion. Got the completion, but did not get enough for the first down, and the Panthers will kick it away once again. So in a tight game like this, you know, every every play matters. There's a little bit more of a microscope put on every single play, and these are the kind of games that I enjoy the most. Bouncing snap, and the kick is away. Goes through the hands of Nathaniel Jello. He picks it up. Jello makes a move, and there's a flag down. A Jello still on his feet, finally brought down. But the flag will more than likely be an illegal block against Oshawa, and they'll bring it back at least 10. So the line of scrimmage might be the 13-yard line. Yeah, just kind of misplayed the catch there on that. But ran back, got it. And here's the block, I think. Yeah. Number 19, Walker Carter with a little shove right there. I think he tried to let up, but he still got him. <laughs> the referee right there to throw the flag, too. Good job, ref. <laughs> Let's go, Line! Let's go, So the ball comes back to the 13-yard line. Just two penalties for 15 yards by the Hawkeyes, but they have the football here. Here's no sudden, no, the fake. Seaton takes it himself. All the way up the middle, Trent Seaton. Oh, he's gone. Still on his feet. Seaton, Seaton still going. Seaton goes 97 yards for the touchdown. Wow. Nobody was gonna catch him. I thought that maybe the Cumberland <laughs> defender had a chance there, but we saw how fast this kid is. Let's see the replay here. A great fake, too. I think he faked out half of the uh, defensive team there. And just, you know, a smaller defensive back on that kid. It's a tough tackle to ask that, that, that kid to make. And you can just see the extra gear there. He doesn't even look back. Oh, there he does. But what a moment. You know, when you're running and you're all alone like that in a big game, everything seems to slow down as a running back and everything becomes slow motion. But you'll have a... He'll have that memory for a long time. And a bad snap. Nathaniel Jello wrapped up and no conversion once again. So the score now 19 to seven in favor of the Oshawa Hawkeyes. And you know what? I gotta say it, Jesse. This is a situation that the Cumberland Panthers have not found themselves in very often this season. Not usually. And, and I, I would say this season, but even as a program over the last like you know, eight to ten years, they've they've usually been in some big games and, and won them handedly. So 
you're right. You know, and I, I mentioned at the, the front of this broadcast that Oshawa won a very tight game against Burlington to get here. So they're, they're, they're used to being in tight games. So it'll be interesting to see now how Cumberland responds. They've got to come back with a score. They opened the scoring on their opening possession of the football game with a 41-yard touchdown run by Gavin Poirier. But they have been very, very quiet ever since. Yeah, yeah, I think that Oshawa has done a great job of adjusting. They've they definitely keyed on number eight, and they know they know what he's about. We've seen them run inside the tackles and not get very much. So it'll be interesting to see, oh, you know, what the offensive coordinator dials up for Cumberland when next time they got the ball here coming up. So a 97-yard touchdown run by quarterback Trent Seaton makes it 19-7. And Isaac Kalubi Lucchini gets set to kick the football away. And this time, I do believe he's going downfield. Well, you shall see. Lots of movement along the line. Here is Lucchini's kick. Little shorty right into the hands of Caden Dial, And he has it. That was close though, Dan. It was very close. And Oshawa with in a great position right now, Jesse, because they've got a 12 point lead and they can afford to offer Cumberland this type of field position because their defense is playing so well. Absolutely. And like you said earlier, you know, they haven't really had much success since the first series, really. So. Um, this is an important one for the Cumberland offense to uh, show to themselves that they've found a few other you know, chinks in the armor. Anderson yet to throw a pass. This time he does. And he completes it over there to number 80, Nikos Tasoulis. He's still on his feet and then pounded to the dirt by Nosa. That was a big hit. You just kind of, anytime you, you catch the ball and you, and you make your way, you cut back into the center of the field, you know that you're coming towards the cavalry there and Noosa just kind of cleaned him out at the end of the play here. Good pursuit by Noosa too. Like he's kind of jogging there and then he sees he can get back involved and he delivers a nice shoulder hit. So Tesoulis picks up six on the play at second and four. And it, another passing situation for the Panthers. Here's Anderson. Drives the quarterback draw, gets loose. Anderson is sprung, gets to the outside. Vincent Anderson finally forced out of bounds around the 20 yard line. And a couple big hits at the end of the play there too. I mean, these are the little things that kind of just provide a little bit of, little bit of damage along the way throughout the game and they add up in the fourth quarter on just in terms of you know how much will is left in these players. <laughs> The ball in at the 18, that's a 19 yard pickup for Anderson. And you know what Anderson, what I like about this player is he's very elusive. He doesn't, he doesn't look like he is, but actually he's very patient and, and he's able to just kind of deliver a little bit of weird timing that makes it hard for him to be, be brought down. And he try it again, but Lucchini gets him. I'm telling you, Dan, kid, you know, if I'm universities, South of the border or or north here in Ontario, I'm looking at this kid on the on the D line of Oshawa. This is a this is a really athletic big player, and he has got a real engine. Like he is chasing p plays down from across the field, right? So he's got a great motor. This is everything that you want out of a young player at this age. You know, if you can harness his development, this kid could be a, a, a real real stud. Trent Murdoch was the ball carrier. Minus three on the pickup. Second down, 13 yards to go in the pass to Poirier. The straight arm, Poirier gets to the outside, keeps the legs going inside the 10 to about the eight. There to bring him down, Nathaniel Jello. And he signals the first down, he knows it. Um, you know, they're gonna need Poirier to make some big plays here in this game to get back in it and, and hopefully win it. This is one of these plays. 
Ten yards on the gain for Gavin Poria. His first reception of the football game. And it's another first down for the Panthers. This time inside the 10 at about the eight. First down goal to go for Cumberland trying to get at least one score here. Anderson takes it himself, gets to the outside, cuts back in and scores. And there you go, Panthers are back in the end zone. And a nice play by Anderson just to kind of take his time and run to daylight. And it kind of, it really opened up quite nicely for him here. We'll see on the replay. A huge block there by the, I think the center to spring him open and gets himself into the end zone and gives these Panthers another shot. And it's number 51, Nathan Melsness that will attempt this point after. The kick is up and it's good. So it's now 19-14. The difference only five points as the Cumberland Panthers refuse to go away. This is great. This is going to be a great finish, I can tell. Great response by Cumberland on that series. 19-14 with 4.31 left to go here in the opening half. And boy, these two teams have been trading offense since we got here. Just one turnover in this game, and that's only because the Cumberland Panthers gave up the ball on downs. That's right, that's right. I mean, this is this is a heavyweight bout. This is what we had in, what we were hoping we were in store for, and they're they're not disappointing. Five touchdowns. So far in this one, and the kick taken down around the 40 yard line. That's where the Oshawa Hawkeyes will scrimmage first and 10. So I don't think, you know, Oshawa really needs to do a whole lot of anything different. I mean, they, they converted, they scored on that huge pass. Um, might like to see maybe, you know, just keep testing the perimeters a little bit more um, especially with you know this runner uh, you know the other thing too this number five quarterback I mean you might be looking at some bootlegs um, but you don't want to you know put all the emphasis in his hands you just want to spread it around at this point and convert a few first downs take a little bit more time off the clock here first down 10 yards to go for Oshawa Not quite sure what the delay is. Somebody may have called a timeout. Timeout called by the Oshawa Hawkeyes. They want to make sure that they've got everybody concentrating, doing their jobs in, in football. Everybody has to do their job successfully in order for a play to work well. I like the Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick coaching philosophy of just do your job and really that's what it comes down to is right everyone has a role and as soon as you start worrying about the next person's job to the right or the left that's when things break down you just focus on what you're doing do it well and you'll have success Panthers on a bit of a momentum swing here getting a touchdown to get back within five Oshawa their offense has been very good so far in this opening half. Cumberland's defense has to do what is kind of expected of them now because they're so good in the Ottawa area. Their defense is so solid. They need a, a, a quick turnover here would be perfect for them. Absolutely. More than anything, just the threat of having people on the field with their offense. Nosa gets the call. Flag at the line of scrimmage, and Nosa will lose a couple on the play. 
it's funny what I've noticed about Nusa is every time he's tackled, people wrap him up. They have both arms around, and it and it's still two or three yards after contact. So he's a really strong, which you know just makes it so hard to get him on the ground. Offside against the Panthers, so it'll be first and five from the 45-yard line. Tafari Morgan right in the slot on the left side. Seaton in the shotgun. Good snap. Seaton look, looking for his and just beyond his reach. Ryland Goff Lambert looking for a call. Looked right at the official. Thought he might have been pushed on the way by, but it goes right past. I was thinking the same thing. I mean, it, sometimes they're fun. Little trigger hat there and I don't think it was a pass interference although he did kind of get his hand up there without looking back which is a fencing penalty yeah it's a close one I think that could have been called probably on second down second and five not a bad call for the OC go for the bundle now and or on the first play and if it doesn't work out get the first down here's Nosa he gets the call he has the first down he's into the secondary and finally brought down after a pickup of 15 yards yeah nice gain by Oshawa after after a big uh, big pass you know I think at this point I really love the way that uh, I really love the way that Oshawa has called the game so far because they've showed that really so many different threats they've gotten a huge touchdown with a pass Right over, or blew the top off the defense there. They just tried to do it again. The quarterback has had a huge run. Noosa has had a huge run. So, like, this makes it very difficult to defend this this offense. David Noosa, six carries, 64 yards, and a touchdown so far in this one. Trent Seaton, one carry for 97 and a touchdown. Noosa gets the call. Wrapped up there by... Number one, I believe that's Caden Dial once again. Nosa. There to make the stop. He's tackled by number eight, Gavin Poirier. Oh, Poirier's there to make the stop for the Cumberland Panthers. Second down. So 228 left in the half. We've got a you know five point game here. So this is uh, this is an interesting situation. Second down in about six for Oshawa. Let's see what they call. Jack Snow flanked wide right. The give to Nosa once again, trying to go around the right side, and he's wrapped up immediately. Gavin Poirier there. Hey, Nosa, tackled by Poirier. The other running back there to stop him. Yeah, good defense, and it's funny that's uh, that's an appropriate play because some of the uh, some of the kind of graphics going out this week leading up to this game was featuring these two players on, on an Instagram graphic. So now here they are head to head and uh, it's it's awesome to see this level of caliber football at the end of the uh, end of the football season here. Well Poirier won that battle and <laughs> it'll be a battle all night long. So another timeout called and the coaching staffs at this level are allowed out in the huddle, which is rather interesting. The teams don't have to go back to the bench to allow the coach to talk to them. There you see it, 2.11 left to go. 19-14 and a big third down play coming up for the Oshawa Hawkeyes. If they can maintain this, get another first down and maybe eat up a lot of that clock, they're gonna have a really nice halftime break and the Cumberland Panthers and Stephen Pransky are going to have to sort of go back to the drawing board a little bit more to see what they can do to answer everything that the Hawkeyes seem to be throwing at them. Yeah, it's a real shootout. Yeah, I, I wonder how you approach this as a, as a coaching staff in the, in the halftime because you're kind of guessing how the other team's going to be adjusting. And uh, they've 
both teams have seen some decent success, but you know, we're in a heavyweight tilt here. On third down, Seaton in under center. He's got Nosa in the backfield. And the give to Nosa. Nosa breaks through. Needed to get to around the 40 yard line, and he's very close to I don't think he first got it. down yardage. Depends on the spot, but I don't think he got it. They might have to measure this. Let's have a look nope. at the replay nope. here. He's given them a first down. Referee Malcolm Bruce has signaled that the necessary yardage was earned. And David Nosa gets himself another first down. That's seven so far on the half and an eight yard pickup. So first down, 10 yards to go. From the, oh, all kinds of movement on the line of scrimmage there. Flags fly, and that will be more than likely a legal procedure against Oshawa. Indeed, that is the call, and they'll move it back five. It'll be first and 15. So, you know, a little bit of a jump, but it's still, still first down here, so... They still got a lot of real estate with a minute 53 to go in the half. The ball is on the 45 yard line. Seaton in the shotgun. Motion by Nosa, Seaton picks it up and he's eaten up by the Cumberland defense. The big play that they needed, they get. Huge play. Some back in the second. Completely, you know, unmanageable uh, place. Adam Khalil with the sack. Look at them swatting at the ball there. Well coached his defense, trying to rip that ball out. I think uh, offensively here, you might look at some sort of a draw uh, out of the shotgun or uh, maybe even a screen pass if they got something like that. Minute 40, left on the clock. Second down, 25 yards to go. Seaton able to get away from that pursuer. Another high tackle. Seaton still on his feet finally. Forced out of bounds after a pickup of about four yards. And a long way for that four. Gavin Poirier there to make the stop. Yeah, you know, it's impressive to make something out of that because uh, that was a pretty much a broken play from the beginning. But he is an athletic quarterback, as we've seen, so he's still able to uh, get outside and avoids one tackle before being dragged finally out of bounds. So on third down, third and 18, the ball on the Cumberland 49-yard line. Seaton in the shotgun. They're going. No, another low snap and another big sack. Cumberland has the football and they're going. Seaton finally able to bring him down, but the fumble picked up there. Number 66, Tristan Plant picks up the loose football and the turnover results in Cumberland with an opportunity to take the lead before the break. A minute 11 left to go in the ball on the Joshua 36. So they bring pressure from the right side and I think maybe that's a halfback or maybe, maybe the Will linebacker blitz in and he's able, he was able to actually get his helmet right on the ball when he made contact and just jarred it loose and now Cumberland ball here with a minute 11 left. All kinds of movement. Anderson throws that one out for Poirier, picks it up off the turf and takes off around the left side. Poirier puts on the brakes, cuts back in, loses the football, and Pransky falls on it to save it for the Cumberland Panthers. Johnny on the spot. That's a big play by number 17 to be there. And it also shows the reason he was there is he was, he was blocking for his man. 
Look at that, downfield blocking by 17. He's sticking with the play. He's chasing it down, and because you get rewarded when you uh, pursue the ball. And in this case, that gives Cumberland another chance to put some points on the board before the half. 28 yards on the, the gain by Poirier, and here's the quarterback draw by Anderson, gets down to the one, and they try to push the pile over the goal line. The play is called, it'll be second down. Anderson, he's not the goal line by the team. So a real opportunity here, Dan, for Cumberland to jump back into the lead here before half. Second down, goal to go from the one. Poirier takes the snap and goes in for the touchdown. Gavin Poirier scores from one yard out and the Panthers lead this one now 20 to 19 with the extra point pending. Big play, they just keep it simple. This is the kind of uh, play that got them here and, and they're sticking with number eight. And he doesn't disappoint, he gets his, gets his team into the lead for the, uh, is it the, well, the second time today, right? They, they, they opened the scoring in the, on their opening drive, correct. So a great game so far. It's got everything they want. It's got a little, little passing, some big plays, but some solid defense too. So Poirier gives the T back to Melsness. And it looks as if the Panthers are going to go for two here and force a field goal as opposed to a two-point conversion to tie it. That's a smart decision. I think, uh, I think the points don't really do anything for you if you go for the extra points. So it's a smart decision by coaching staff just to uh, go for the two now. So they are going for two. Vincent Anderson in under, rolls to his right. He's gonna be taken down. Big play there by number 21, Cal Chacon. So it remains a one point game, 26.6 seconds left. We can see just a good play, some good penetration of the defense that, that Oshawa player basically took on three blocks, shed them all, and got the tackle. Fantastic play by the Hawkeyes. So 26.6 seconds left to go. You try and kick them deep in this one, in this situation, or do you play it and try and get a fumble, get them to touch it, kick it hard at them? Yeah, I, I think like what they've been doing, uh, you know, Oshawa's actually been doing a good job just kind of Squib kicking it to the uh, center of the field, second line. I think I'd be doing that if I was Cumberland as well. Here's Nathan Melsness with the bright green kicks. Cumberland short a couple of players. They get them into position. <laughs> And we're just about set. <coughs> Melsness is kick into the middle, picked up, uh -oh. and a big run. It's McKenzie. Zane McKenzie is going to score. He picked it up and scooted the rest of the way. It's not Zane McKenzie. It's Keenan Brighton. Wow. That's exactly what you don't want to do. There are flags on the field. We'll have to wait and see whether it or not it's enough to cancel that touchdown run. But there you see Keenan Brighton just, it's like the extra. You know, what? You, can't, you can't anticipate something like that happening. You, you got to cover, cover the I mean, That's You can't do that at this point game 
a 72 yard kick return for a touchdown by Keith Brighton. And it comes with 16 four seconds left to go and we <coughs> there's an injured ball player on the field so the score now is the touchdown coming back it would appear not 16.4 seconds left to go. And trying to get a number on that injured ball player. It's Adam Khalil, number 75, who has a sack in this game, and he looks a little buggy as he's taken off. But it's not a touchdown. The penalty has obviously wiped that out, and the ball comes off way out to the 30-yard line. Score remains 20 to Hawkeye. 18.4 left on the clock here in the first half. Malcolm Bruce, the referee, blowing the play in. In at quarterback from the 30, first down. 10 yards to go. Seaton taking off right up the middle. Trent Seaton gets very close to a first down. It'll be a pickup of nine. Yeah, a quick decision to, uh, to tuck the ball and run downfield. Didn't like what he saw. And he's still got eight and a half seconds. That's three carries for 110 yards for quarterback Trent Seaton in this one. That's impressive. Nosa has eight carries for 70 yards. And the Hawkeyes have had some success in the air as well. Second down. Half left on the clock. Second down. About one yard to go from the... Cumberland 21 yard line. Out of the shotgun. Seaton, play action, takes it himself once again. Seaton trying to get around, around the right side, gets back in and gets inside the 10 to about the seven. Big pick up there, 14 yards for Seaton and another big Oshawa first down. But that will end the first half. The time ran out on them. But a good first half for the Oshawa Hawkeyes and a good first half for the Cumberland Panthers. Only one point separating the two teams in the OFFL Tier 1 U14 Provincial Championship. Don't go anywhere, folks. Second coming up after the break.
Welcome back to Tag Park at Keith Harris Stadium on the campus of the Carleton University in the nation's capital. Dan Mooney alongside Jesse Card, 20 to 19 in favor of the Cumberland Panthers here in this one. And uh, a great first half. Oshawa with, uh, with some tremendous running, Jesse. Uh, David Nosa, eight carries for 70 yards. Trent Seaton, the quarterback, four carries for 124 yards and a major score. Uh, on the other side, you've got Vincent Anderson, five carries for 45 yards and a touchdown. And Gavin Poirier, who's doing it on both sides of the ball for the Panthers. Uh, he's, uh, he's doing such a, a great job offensively as he has all year long. And defensively in this one, he's made four tackles already in just the first half. Well, it's, it's interesting. Like, these are really, really well-matched teams. They're almost mirroring each other with the mobile quarterbacks with the star running back that are playing both plays. Uh, really, Panthers, really, the only thing they're missing is, is a big, big pass, touchdown, really, to, uh, to match the Oshawa offense. But I think I'm also really impressed with the defenses. I think they've done a good job of, of keeping – both of their teams in at least in competition and, and keeping the scores fairly fairly close one point game separates them so um, this is going to be a fantastic finish to the fall football season the fall football league with football ontario and uh and really you know perhaps another championship for nakafa or another championship for the teams down in uh, the gta just about set to get things going and it would appear that the Oshawa Hawkeyes are going to get the ball first here to start this second half. The Cumberland Panthers took their opening drive of the football game, 62 yards with a 40 yard, 41 yard touchdown run by Gavin Poirier to open the scoring. The, con the touchdown was converted by number 51, Nathan Melsness. It was seven nothing Cumberland, a three yard touchdown run from David Nosa tied things up and the convert was good and at the end of the first quarter it was seven apiece all kinds of scoring two touchdowns apiece in that second quarter a 38 yard touchdown pass from Trent Seaton to Zane McKenzie and a couple of great runs a 97 yard touchdown run from Seaton as this second half underway. Keenan Brighton with it. Brighton's kickoff return called back at the end of the first half, but still great field position for the Oshawa Hawkeyes to start this second half. Yeah, and they just kind of hit safe on the kickoff again. We see the returners, Nosa, at the back, so you definitely don't want to kick it deep to him and give him, you know, 15, uh, 15 yard head start to his run so in his return so here we go you know this is good field position for Oshawa to start out near midfield let's see what they got with their you know triple or quadruple threat offense Seton at quarterback in the shotgun they've had some issues with snaps from center they seem to have that taken care of Nosa gets the call gets into the secondary David Nosa the first play from scrimmage here in the second half finally brought down by Caden Dial. Great tackle to keep him out of the end zone. But we're going to replay. We'll see really. Look, look at the hole open up here. A uh, really great block on the line there. Actually, he, he, he blocked two guys and made that hole for, uh, for Nosa to get through and, and you know it was impressive by number seven to catch him. 52 yards and a big first down for the Hawkeyes. David Nosa in the backfield once again. Seaton out of the shotgun. The give to Nosa around the left side. Can he turn the corner? No, he cannot. Taken there, taken down there by Israel Mufuda, 
number 14. And a nice sol solid tackle. But he kind of looked like Oshawa's coming out with an extra a little more pep in their step, eh, Dan? To start this second half, and they needed it. They were down by a point. They didn't get a chance to score before the end of the half, which I think they really wanted to. But now they've opened up this third quarter with a big run. The pickup was three by Nosa. He's got it again. Nosa has it, and he's wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. So no gain for Nosa there. I mean, he's, he's getting into the second level almost every run, and he's putting a, you know, a lot of pressure on that linebacking core to wrap them up. But they've done a pretty good job of holding them into this uh, at this point. But with this you know, dual threat quarterback, uh, I really think that you can want to be keen on him here down on the uh, down in the red zone for some sort of quarterback draw. Third down, five to go in the red zone. Seaton fakes, tosses it out for Goff Lambert, and Goff Lambert gets close to a first down, but he might not have enough. Surprised they got that back. Let's have a look on the replay here, Dan. It's a nice pass. It's a really nice touch here. He actually throws it to his inside shoulder. But a great defensive play to strip the ball out of there. I, I'm, I can't believe that he got back on that. But he still didn't get enough yards for the first down. And it goes into the books as a turnover. The ball lost on downs and the Cumberland Panthers take over. So again, the Cumberland defense coming up big, taking one away from the Oshawa Hawkeyes. They're, I mean, you can't ask for much more out of your defense, right? The defense is just designed to keep keep their uh, team in it and, and limit you know pro offensive productivity. They're not expecting to shut them out. Anderson, the give to Poirier. And he's wrapped up almost immediately there. So I'll have a look at the quick replay here. Great job by 52 on the on the defensive line there. Anderson De Silva. De Silva sheds his block, gets his eyes in the backfield, and basically runner runs right into his arms. Nice job. Second down. Ten yards to go. Loaded backfield in the shotgun. The give to Poirier once again. Trying to follow his blockers up the left side, but Isaac Kalubi Lucchini would have none of that. Yeah, there was absolutely nothing there for them. And, you know, as a defense, especially, you know, if you can just bottle things up in the middle like that, that's just a great strategy. It's just going to keep everything contained in the middle, keep the contain good on, on either side, and uh, there's really nothing the offense can do to get through. They've got to kick it away here. Too deep in their own territory with a one point lead and the Oshawa Hawkeyes just so hungry to score. Yeah, this just isn't a good situation all around for Cumberland. Because if they, you know, you definitely don't want to give up the points because points are so hard earned in this type of game and it's so close. But I mean, you don't want to kick it to Nosa and you, and you know, if, if you kick it out of bounds, you're giving them great field position. So Nathaniel Jello waits for the punt. Takes it on the one hop at the 40. Jello still with it. Ball's loose. Who's got it? No, they give it to Oshawa. So again, great field position just outside the 25 yard line. It'll be at the 26 where the Hawkeyes will scrimmage first down 10 yards to go. Trailing by a point with 7.36 remaining here in the third quarter. Yeah, and this Hawkeyes offense is red hot right now. <laughs> I'm looking at change of possession. I think they're going deep here, Danny. Seaton with no say in the backfield. Bad snap. Seaton 
has to retrieve it. Running away, he's tripped up, he still has it. Seaton trying to get around the corner and finally pushed out of bounds. By number 22, that's uh, Mafuda. And you, as we see, Dan, this this quarterback center exchange still, you know, continues to plague the Hawkeyes. Another wasted play, and you know they're not going to get too many more chances. There, I mean, it would be interesting to see how many bad snaps there have been and how many plays have gone wasted. So it's a loss of about four for Trent Seaton. A timeout called by the Cumberland Panthers. So with this timeout, gives their defense a chance to sort of catch their breath. They've been on the field for most of this second half, although it's only uh, five minutes and 10 seconds old, but for the most part, they've been out there. No first downs for the Panthers. Just one first down. After a great first half where the Hawkeyes had seven and the Panthers had six. Yeah, they, you know, both teams have, have done a fairly well, a fairly good job of sustaining drives. And, you know, it's not real quick, like, two and outs in this game. They've all been able to kind of keep their offenses out there for, for you know, a, a certain amount of time. And, and you know, that, that makes it a bit more difficult on, on the defense. Um, so it'll be interesting now, you know, second down here, uh, about second and 13. And, uh, and like we said, Oshawa just seems, the, 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 the vibe right now is that they're on the doorstep and they're, and they're gonna score here. Second down, 13 yards to go. In under center is Seaton this time. The give, once again, to Nosa and the Panthers have them all wrapped up in the backfield. Number one, Caden Dial leading the charge defensively for the Panthers. And offside against Cumberland called, so it'll be second down repeated, about eight to go. That helps them out. That makes it much more manageable. And it kind of, uh, you know, it opens up the playbook a little bit more for the offensive coordinator as well. So the ball at the 25 yard line. Third down, or second down, nine yards to go. Three receivers up top. Seaton keeps it himself. Runs up the middle, and the pile pushes forward. Guess who was leading the charge on the defensive side of the ball? Number eight, Gabriel, or Gavin Poirier. Yeah, not surprised. He's getting in there, he's getting his nose dirty. And, uh, you know, I'm looking, they had, they had one receiver down at the bottom of the screen here. Uh, isolated, but their number 10 receiver here is number two receiver to the top of the field. Um, I'd be, you know, this is third down, but I, you know, I, I think they're just going to run it up the middle here with uh, Nosa. That's exactly what they do. Nosa goes to the left. They got him wrapped up, and they finally bring him down at the 20. And that is a big stop once again by the Cumberland defense. Yeah, you got to be happy as uh, Cumberland get get your defense off the field and uh, give them a breather. As you said, they've been out there a long time. Kept kept Oshawa out of the out of the end zone, and uh, 5:34 left in the third quarter. It's starting to get into that uh, go time here. Kept Oshawa out of the end zone three times in this second half alone. Great job by the defense. So here come the Panthers. So they got overloaded about uh, five receivers to the bottom of the screen here. 
Here's Anderson, throws that one. He's got some blockers. There's his lead man. And that pass is complete to number 82, Sam Baptiste. Yeah, so you see here what they do is they put all these receivers out and then they just run a, a quick little you know, screen, screen pass over to the receiver and he's got all those blockers out in front of him. Now it's great, it's really good pursuit there by 19 to, to get him on the ground, make sure that they limit that gain. Baptiste picked up eight. It's second and two. There's Anderson, throws once again and he heard footsteps. His man heard footsteps. He was, once again, that one, Garvin Luberis, the intended receiver, and there's no, he heard those footsteps and there's no way he wanted to get his hands on that football. No, no, you know, like that's, that's difficult. He had somebody coming, coming, barreling down on him and uh, I think that's probably best incomplete that he caught. So on third down, third and two, big play for the Panthers. If they can get a first down, they can eat up some more clock with a one point lead and give their defense a little bit of a breather. Here's the snap. Anderson tries to take it himself, nowhere to go. And Cumberland will cough up the football. And he had a chance. It looked like it opened up there early, but just as quickly as it looked open, Oshawa closed the gaps and uh, limited that to nothing. So Oshawa, Oshawa will take over here. So the ball is on the 25 yard line. First down, 10 yards to go for the Hawkeyes. Trailing by a point, this is the fourth time they've been this deep in the Cumberland end of the field during this second half. The give to Nosa. Nosa weaves his way through and very close to another first down. Give him a pickup of nine. Wow, uh, you know, I'm very impressed by the defense just to to get this guy on the ground. They're, they're swarming the ball very, very well. Um, and they're gang tackling, you know, and that's what you coach these, these boys up to do, boys and girls, is, is to uh, grab cloth, especially on a kid like this, very athletic running back, grab cloth and wait for the cavalry to get there. <laughs> Hope for help. Second and one. Ball on the 16. The give to Nosa once again, left side, keeps the legs going inside the five yard line. A pickup of 11 for David Nosa and another first down for the Oshawa Hawkeyes. So here you see again, he gets a big block by his, the big man on the O line there playing uh, tackle, left tackle. And they run the same play twice in a row. It kind of feels like, when is the dam gonna break here, Danny? Ball on the five yard line. First down, goal to go, Oshawa. Here's the give to Nosa once again, and he gets to the goal line, the ball comes loose. They still got it, second down I think, third down. Be third down. So Nosa now 15 carries, 152 yards, and a major score. And you, it is second down. It was first and goal from the five, and it's now second down and goal from the one. Seaton takes it himself and just sidled, sidles into the end zone for the major score. A one-yard touchdown run by Trent Seaton. His second touchdown of the game gives the Hawkeyes 
a 25-20 lead with the extra point pending. Wow, and they just, they just, the classic CFL touchdown play. They get in behind the big guys and push it forward into the end zone. The touchdown coming at the 10-15 mark of the third quarter. Here's the X, they're going for the two point conversion. The give to Nosa and the Cumberland defense says Nosa. <laughs> I was waiting for that, Dan, I was waiting for that. Well, there you go, so five point ball game. I still think defensively that's a win. I know, I know it sounds crazy, but it took them a lot to get into the end zone. And, and I mean, Four possessions. Four possessions. They're also going to need their offense to, to keep to match point. You know, like this is what this game is. You're not going to keep Oshawa out of the end zone for long. The Cumberland Panthers have really pretty much had their way in in Kaffa at this level for the last few seasons. They kind of walked away with it this year again, and this really. The first tangible competition that they faced most of the season. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's been uh, it's been an interesting year at all all the different levels. You know, definitely some teams have uh, have jumped out front, but uh, overall, like great competition, especially at the Pee Wee Bantam and, uh, and Midget level. We saw some great championship games, but Cumberland uh, at this level definitely uh, kind of showed that they, they belong here in this game. And, and this type of competition is really good for them at the end of the season just to, to cap off the year and see where they stand on a provincial uh, stage. Isaac Kalubi Lucchini with the kick. Taking it deep. Here's Poirier. Gavin Poirier trying to get to the outside. Barrels forward and is finally taken down by Michael Bodneria. So first down, 10 yards to go for the Cumberland Panthers at their own 45 yard line. A good place to start, but they've got to start getting some first downs without one here so far in the second half with a minute 37 to go in the third quarter. Yeah, and I kind of feel like they're relying a little bit too much on Anderson's legs. Um, I'd like to see them, you know, I'd like to see them go back to what they tried last series where they're spreading the ball out, they're throwing some uh, swing passes, getting the blockers out in front of them, I like that. There's Anderson, swings that out to Luberis. Luber, Galvin Luberis taken or held up behind the line of scrimmage and it'll be about a five yard loss for the Panthers. Yeah, really well defended. Uh, they weren't fooling anybody. You know, they've been running that play quite a bit. So, um, you know, defense is starting to feel a little, a little bit quicker and that allows them to get out there uh, in the flats quicker and, and make the tackle. A blustery day, we've had blizzards we've had a little bit of rain we've had a little bit of everything even the cold here in the nation's capital certainly nothing like they're getting in southern ontario but the panthers trying to get out nice stiff arm there by poirier poirier has the first down and they'll get out over midfield onto the Hawkeye side of midfield and the first down, the pickup, 16 yards by Poirier on that pass. Yeah, and you know what? As soon as he catches the ball, he gets his eyes upfield, delivers a nice stiff arm with his right right hand, and you know because of that, he gets himself about another extra eight yards out of that, so great play by Cumberland here. And they needed that first, first down of the second half, and it took them almost a full quarter to get it. Here's Anderson, sets up, looking downfield, can't catch it! 
He couldn't bring it in all alone. Downfield, number 15, Caleb DeLude, and just unable to get his hands on that perfect stats from Vincent Anderson. Yeah, and you saw that number 10, the uh, free safety for Oshawa, just kind of had his eyes on the quarterback, and he didn't see, you know, the this, this streaking receiver there running, the, running down the seam. He got a bad angle, and uh, unfortunately for the Cumberland Panthers, couldn't, couldn't bring that one in. A lot of pressure to make, make a big catch like that at and 14 that years off, old. And that was on third down. On third down nonetheless, yeah. I'm not sure if he was aware of that, but. Um, but Actually, it was second down. This will start the fourth quarter. That's what I was going to say. Anderson gets the ball away. Poirier makes the catch. And then sidesteps a couple of tackles, keeps his legs going and gets very close to another Panthers first down. It's completely contingent upon where they spot the football. Very close. Fast stop by Poirier. He's tackled by number 82, Keenan Brighton. Keenan Brighton there to make the stop. Looks to be a gain of about nine and a half yards. Wow, what a football player this Poirier kid is, though, eh? Yeah. He's, he can catch the ball out of the backfield. He's a tough, tough runner, you know, between the tackles. And he's got the breakaway speed, you know, to get around the corner and, and, and take one to the house. So. And he's 15 years old. Okay. okay. Maybe the nose of the football, shy of moving the sticks once again. So it'll be third down. And just follow the big boys here. Very impressed though, Dan, by this defensive, uh, defensive line player, Isaac. He has been unbelievable. There he is. Marking out the yard marker for the rest of his team here. He's playing nose tackle on this play, so let's see what happens. Anderson takes it around the end. Is he going to be able to get outside? No, he is not. What a tackle. Number 19, Walker Carter. Grabbed him by the sweater and ragdolled him down. That's it's another turnover by Cumberland. Now that is a championship level tackle right there. Look at that. Wow, unbelievable. So another injured player down in front of the Oshawa bench. And training staffs have been very, very busy on this cold, cold day a hard, crusty field. Uh, it's not normally the, uh, the kind of cushioning you'd get from a field turf spot. It's, everything's frozen here. Yeah, it feels like the old 1990s AstroTurf. Uh, but, but I just want to say, we're watching the refs here, a picture of the refs, like, great job all day by the uh, officiating crew. You know, done a great job calling fair games, calling good games for these kids. and. You know, I think Football Ontario is really making a bigger push to get younger younger folks involved in officiating. You know, you could be a you could be. A, there's actually several players from Ottawa that are actually still playing, and they're starting to officiate uh, the football games. You know, they were only a couple couple years removed with the games that they're officiating. You see that a lot more in hockey, right, Dan, with the younger referees. But football is trying to do a little bit better. They're they're definitely getting older as a group, and they need more referees so since covid every sport has been crying for people to officiate there you have it hockey is crying for people football has been crying for people basketball is even crying for people since the covid pandemic and this is the kind of thing where it's uh it's really important if you had a great experience in minor sports maybe this is the way you can give back well, you know, it's funny. I was talking to uh, a pretty high-level quarterback in the OUA, 
and he started officiating me about 10 years ago, and, and he actually said it's, it's, it's closer to the game than coaching is because you're part of the team, you're calling the game, you're writing the action. So, you know, he really thinks it's a, it's a lot of fun, and we're hoping that more players, you know, maybe if you're watching this game, you can get involved officiating maybe flag and then work your way into some tackle games, but it's a good opportunity, and, uh, and they'll even pay you to, uh, to officiate, so you pick up a little bit of extra cash along the way. So big discussion going on with the Cumberland coaching staff and the officials. Not sure what exactly they're discussing. But it's first down for the Hawkeyes at their own 46 yard line. Tyler, they're still sorting things out here but I think we're just about ready to go. Oshawa ball, 10.53 left in the fourth quarter. First down, 10 yards to go. Seaton in under, the give to Nosa. Bounces off a couple of tackles and plunges forward for about a yard. Yeah, good, good first down carry for a few. This is hard, hard yards they're both earning on, on both sides of the ball. So 10.25 left to go, and it might be a little early, but uh, who's getting some consideration for your most outstanding offensive player, your most outstanding defensive player, and the MVP of the game? Well, I, my, my defensive MVP of the game right now, as it stands, is 66 Isaac. Uh, Isaac on, on Hawkeyes. Kalubi Lucchini. Very impressed by him. He had some really critical plays early on in this game. High snap, Seaton brings it down. He's going for the bundle on the post, and that one nowhere near an opportunity to catch it. Intended for Jack Snow, incomplete. Third down. I think offensively for the for the Hawkeyes, you gotta you gotta consider the quarterback. I mean, he's he's done a really good job managing the game. And it definitely made some big plays. I mean, how many yards has he rushed for today? But, um, but definitely, I, I'd be thinking of that. I mean, Nosa is definitely a, a choice there. But I, th I think it's really been a team effort here. It's been a complete, complete game by the, the Hawkeyes so far. Here's Lucchini. Loose ball. Picked up by the Panthers. Great field position once again. Tristan Plant with his second fumble recovery of this football game gives the Cumberland Panthers again fabulous field position at the Oshawa 42. Yeah, it's tough. Five point game. Cumberland with the ball here. Here's Anderson. Anderson setting up. And he's got some blockers ahead of him. It's number 81. Gervin Luberis. Gervin Luberis. Very nice run. Inside the 20. Great play. And you know what? That was that was stiff. Actually, they, they set up the screen really well, as we're going to see here. But one of the one of the defenders here actually snuck through. He shed one of his blocks and he got in there and luckily he wasn't able to make the tackle. Right here. He just kind of got chipped, but number seven almost had him. But the Panthers advanced the ball and they're in great shape here. They move the ball down to the 22 yard line. So a 20 yard pickup on the play by Luberis, his first catch of the ball game, and a big first down for the Panthers. Here they're trying it again. Luberis trying to get around the corner. Oh, and a high tackle there by Nathaniel Jello, and no flag. Yeah, I think it looked worse than it was, Dan. Like uh, I think he, I think he just kind of grabbed his jersey there, but. Kind of twisted his leg a little bit, so I'd watch 
Watch to see if he's hobbling a little bit after that tackle. He, was, might, you think he might have, yeah, it looked uh, like he might have grabbed a little face mask there. But, a little uh, face mask or a horse collar. I think they maybe got away with one there. On second down, 15 yards to go. Panthers trailing by five. And timeout called by the Oshawa Hawkeyes. They want the Panthers to think about it a little. Yeah. Just want to make sure that both, you know, make sure everyone's in the right position. Make sure they got the right play call. Uh, this is critical time here. 7.44 left in the game. So provincial championship on the line. And Yeah, so this is uh, this is going to be going to be a good finish here, I think. Oshawa leads 25-20. Seven minutes, 44 seconds left to go in this Tier 1 U14 Provincial Championship. The Hawkeyes have come all the way from Oshawa for this one. The Panthers had to fight Ottawa traffic to get here. Anderson in under on second down and movement along the line of scrimmage. Anderson indicating that it started from the Oshawa Hawkeyes and we'll have to wait and see what Malcolm Bruce, the referee, discerns from the information he's receiving right now. Offside against Oshawa. So they'll move it up, it'll be second down, and about 10 yards to go, so almost back to the original line of scrimmage, or the second line of scrimmage after the first down. Third down, or second down, 10 yards to go. Here's Anderson, play action, rolling to his right. Trying to get around the corner. Anderson forced out of bounds there by Zane McKenzie after a pickup of about maybe five. It'll be third down. And you're going to see on the replay here, if he had a little bit more time, if he wasn't being pursued by number seven so, so well, the receiver actually turned up field and he had him open. So uh, that was a nice play. Good pursuit by defense to... Uh, to limit that and, and, and make it an impossibility to get the ball off and a throw to the open receiver downfield. Four yards on the pickup. It's third down, six yards to go. The Panthers inside the Oshawa 20. Here's Anderson, sets up, looks one way, goes post pattern, incomplete. Just slipping at the last second. Rylan Goff Lambert there to break it up. And you can see that he was open for a moment. Great job turning around and getting back into position and saving the day. Oh, is that ever close? Stephen Blair, the intended receiver. And it goes as another turnover by the Panthers. They've had many opportunities, but just failing to capitalize on their chances. On first down. Watch Nosa, he'll be running. No, it's Goff Lambert. Held up in the backfield, keeps the legs going and may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, probably about a yard shy. Yeah, Snow's picking up a little bit more too. Now, I don't know how much colder it's gotten throughout the day, uh, Dan. Let's have a look here. They're sitting at about minus two. The wind making it a little chillier from the south, 23 kilometers per hour. And you can see the flags on the goalposts are beginning to wave a little more heavily. Second down, 
out of the shotgun. Little swing pass out there. That goes down and intended, that one was intended for Freedom Fullerton and unable to bring it down. They gotta make sure that ball's not live too. Yeah, and that looked like it was a lateral pass, so it could conceivably have been live. I think I think it in this type of a game and at this situation within the game, I think if I'm a coach, I'm saying just be safe, jump on the ball. Yep. So on third down, Isaac Kalubi Lucchini kicks the ball away once again, and that one will go out of bounds without a return. And Cumberland gets the football back at the Oshawa 46-yard line. So just one score in this second half after both teams went crazy in the second quarter with two touchdowns apiece. Yeah, they've settled down. They've uh, made the necessary adjustments and they're really delivering an amazing championship game here at the Tier 1 level U14. I'm really excited. This year I got to got to watch a lot of great athletes at this level, and I'm excited to see them progress into uh, into the Bantam, which is you know the U16, and then even in the U18 level. It's going to be fun following these kids. Anderson swings that out for Luberis. Luberis cuts up field and is tripped up very close to another first down. Luberis. Wasting no time giving the football back to the officials. The pickup is nine on the play. It'll be second and one. Great downfield blocking by the Cumberland receivers. Especially the wide receiver down, down below on your screen there. It's a great job sticking with his block. You know, that's tough. It doesn't seem that significant sometimes if you're a receiver, but you know, it literally just gave them five extra yards. And that's, good. What's, that's what's going to make the difference here at the end of the game. Second and one. Luberis once again trying to get to the outside, and he does. Luberis turning the corner, finally forced out of bounds by Nathaniel Hilo. Nathaniel Gello with the with the tackle, but not before Luberis picked up another. Big first down for the Panthers. Got around the corner and then Gello right there. So the ball goes out at the 25 yard line. It'll be first down 10 yards to go. And you're seeing Cumberland slip a few tackles here. So Oshawa's got to make sure that they stay disciplined. There's a bomb down the middle and it's going to be pass interference. Nathaniel Gello. Right there to provide the defensive coverage, but the flag went down immediately, so it could be a first and goal situation for the Panthers here. Yeah, let's have a look at it. I don't. They're both competing for the ball, so I don't know. I don't see it. it looks like they're both going up for the ball to me. First down, Cumberland. And that a very costly penalty. No penalties in this second half for the Oshawa Hawkeyes, but that one brings the football all the way down to the 10 yard line. It'll be first and goal. Or make the 11. So the Panthers can get a first down without scoring a touchdown. Here we go. Anderson. No, it's pouring. Oh, it's a movement. And all kinds of movement along the line of scrimmage. That'll be procedure, more than likely, with Gavin Poirier taking the snap from center. It's a different voice. It's different cadence. It's true. That's the kind of thing that happens. It's true. It's just a little bit of indecision, right? Now, I'm sure it's not the first time they've done it this season, but, uh, but you're right. It's just a little bit unfamiliar to them, and that's what's going to cause that, that little extra you know, early movement. Five penalties for 25 yards over the course of the game for the Panthers. Four for 30 by the Hawkeyes. But turnovers, three apiece.
and Cumberland looking to get a major score and take the lead here as they try to keep it on the ground and eat up more of the clock. That was Poirier once again taking the snap from center and he picks up, actually he'll lose a couple on the play and the ball moves right back out to the 13 yard line. First down or second down, 12 yards to go. Yeah, this is a big one, Dan. This is maybe the biggest play for Cumberland in the game. And you gotta think what, what it's worked for them so far. Anderson goes to throw, loses the handle on it, and may have lost the football. What's the call? This is real close. Oh, oh it's third down. Wow. Anderson able to Anderson fall on the football. That is awfully lucky. But now you're looking at third and 12. You know they're moving the ball up to the original line of scrimmage. It's third, oh no, it's back to the 16, or back to the 21. After, after the procedure call, it moved back to the 16, and this was a loss. So it's back to the 21, third down, 20 yards to go. This could be the ball game. Anderson sets up, throws, Completes his pass. McKenzie wraps up the receiver, and they didn't get enough. No. Luberis made the catch, but the Hawkeyes' defense almost saw it coming. They went for the screen. They had some success there, but the defense was just sniffed it out. <clears throat> Did a great job coming back to the ball. And... Uh, and they ended Cumberland's shots of getting any points on that series. 2.40 left to go in the football game. Cumberland's defense has to come up big. If they're going to do anything in this football game, the Hawkeyes want to keep it on the ground and eat up as much of the clock as they can. Well, Cumberland's done a fantastic job on defense this, this today, so... I wouldn't put anything past them. They could get the ball back for their offense here. Seaton, the give to Nosa. Nosa with some room, brought down. Great tackle. Great tackle there by number 46, Donovan Belil. A uh, pickup of six on the play for David Nosa. 17 carries now for 159 yards. Wow. For David Nosa. He's earned his paycheck here today. On second down. In under center, Seaton. Seaton to give to Nosa once again. Trying to spin away, keeps the legs going. And he'll be short of the first down by about a yard and a half. It'll be third down. Gain of perhaps two yards. It's third down and one yard to go. Okay, so third down, they're going for it. Deep in their own territory, hoping that they can get a first down and keep possession of the ball and chew up some time. Seaton in under center. Takes the football, he'll have the first down, and a whole bunch more! <laughs> 80 yards for the touchdown for Trent Seaton, his third major of the football game, and that puts him over 200 yards for the afternoon. What a play. Gotta look at this one again. Everyone's there. They know it's coming. And they just kind of get log jammed and they lose track of, of the quarterback. And he's just too fast. But that's one that the defense is gonna want back. <laughs> but what an opportun opportunistic break here for Oshawa. 
Ryland Goff Lambert. High snap, the kick is up and it is through. An 80 yard run by Trent Seaton. Well, just about cap things off here with a minute 42 left to go. Trent Seaton's third touchdown. It coming at the 10-18 mark of this fourth quarter makes it 31 to 20 and the extra point by Goff Lambert made it 32 to 20. Lots of big plays here, but that one's gotta hurt if you're Cumberland. Have them, you know, have them down to third in a yard and just let them sneak through like that. That's gonna that's gonna haunt them tonight. Indeed, and you don't you know that uh, if they can return this, anything can happen. A minute 42 is an eternity in Canadian football. And the knee touched, so no return. There is Belil. Blue Burris wanted another chance at that one. Yeah. I don't think you're going to see teams kicking it to their uh, to their star receivers here. We have we haven't seen a whole lot of that today in general. I think it's good coaching to uh, kick kick it second level, first level, and just have them uh, have them jump on it and start you know start with their offense. Would they have a two minute offense at this level? Well, they might not necessarily have a whole different package, but they they, they de I think they definitely play with different pacings. They can speed it up if they want to. Um, it's just a matter of how much they practice it. Here's Anderson setting up, throwing the post pattern for Poirier. Downfield knocked away. Great defense. The defensive play, Nathaniel Jello. There once again for the Oshawa Hawkeyes. He's been there all day, and you got to know that if you're on the Oshawa side of the football, number eight's getting it. Yeah, and he runs, he's the third receiver on the strong side, and he just runs straight up, straight up the field. But safety's there, you know, halfback's there, and you even got another corner kind of converging on the ball, so they were waiting for it. There's not a whole lot of less options left for the Cumberland Panthers here. Okay, second down. 10 yards to go. Panthers in tough, down by 12, a minute 35 left to go. Need a first down here. Here's Anderson, swings that out for Poirier. Gavin Poirier with it, rolls over his man and picks up 12, gets the first down. Cumberland will maintain possession. Great finish on the end of that run. Tell me that, tell me he doesn't want to uh, win this game, eh? He's given everything he's got. Just puts his shoulder down, runs over the defender. Anderson in the shotgun. Sets it up, swings it out for Poirier once again. Poirier with some room on the outside. Poirier finally pushed out at the 40 yard line directly in front of the Hawkeyes bench, but not before he picks up 20 on the play. And you know what? I've seen a couple plays here where the you know the Oshawa team at the end, Oshawa and Cumberland at the end of the play are shaking hands. I mean, it's a lot of good sportsmanship out of there, uh, out, out there on the field today, Dan. And like as an athlete, being able to compete against really good teams. If you're a good team, I mean, there's nothing better. On first down, Anderson looking deep. The ball hangs up. And it's knocked down. Zane McKenzie there providing the defensive coverage on Luberis. It looked like you had a second chance there on the catch. We'll have a look at it here. Just a battle one on one here. It's tipped up. Oh, and just, you know. They both had a crack at it. A second and third chance there, each of them. So. On second down. 
from the 40 yard line. You know the ball's going in the air. There's a little swing out for Luberis. Luberis trying to get to the outside, cuts back inside, and great tackle there, David Nosa. He's all over the field today, I'm telling you. Luberis picks up three on the play. Four catches for 43 yards for Garvin Luberis. And third down. Must take for the Panthers. 30 seconds left to go and time ticking down. Here's Anderson. Anderson gets away from Kubina. There's Anderson. Anderson still running. He'll have enough for the first down. Did he get out of bounds? The flies on the sideline so they may add a few yards to it but the Panthers might be running out of time here. Yeah I think it might have been a horse collar there at the end, end of the play but 19 seconds left it's kind of uh, this is kind of just Cumberland finishing up their season I think Face mask is the official call. Call it whatever you like It's a first down for the Cumberland and the way down to I think it's the a horse call. 13 yard line and not completely unfamiliar territory for these Panthers horse collar tackle is the call first down 10 yards to go for the Panthers 18 seconds left Anderson rolls to his right throws into the corner and it's caught oh, at the one-yard the one line. There were two receivers in the area, and it was caught. Nathan Melsness gets his first catch of the ball game, and the pickup is 12, and it's another coming first down wow. with 10.8 left on the clock. So Anderson just run into his right, gets outside the pocket, and throws a dime, and... The receiver, Poirier, he's just, just, he kind of tries to kick the, the pylon there too, just to get in, but uh, the will of this player is, is on display. So a timeout called. You know that Cumberland wants to get in the end zone at least one more time, but the Oshawa Hawkeyes are going to have a much, much more pleasant ride home with a victory here at the 2022. You know, it's great to see Oshawa do this well and to be able to put together such a great team because like you said, Dan, heading back to Oshawa tonight, uh, they're gonna they're gonna be have a chance to celebrate and enjoy the season, reflect on everything and you know, be able to watch some of this game on YouTube. I, this is fantastic, you know, it's a great moment, great game. Anderson takes the snap. Pulls his way in for the touchdown, but it won't be enough. 8.2 left to go. So a one yard touchdown run by Vincent Anderson, his second touchdown the afternoon, but again, won't be enough. Eight point two left to go. Thirty two twenty six, and they're going for the single. Try to get something on the kickoff. There's the ball. The kick is up, and it's blocked. And a flag caught down, roughing the kicker, perhaps which would be assessed on the kickoff. Right. Yeah, 8.2 seconds left. 32, 26, Oshawa up top on Cumberland Panthers. The U14 level, the provincial championship, the fall football, fall cup. And we've been, you know, Dan, I'm just thinking back on the whole day. We've been really blessed with some great games. Um, a lot of great defense, and I, I just, you know, shout out to all these players and coaches that have come out to Ottawa, Carleton, Carleton University, and 
despite the weather uh, and the snow on the field, you know, they put together some great games and uh, really had a lot of fun today, I think. And it's roughing the kicker again. So they'll move the ball to the five. And Melsness will attempt to get this through the uprights and make it 32-27. Poirier to hold. The ball is down, the kick is up, and it is no good. So it's 32-26, and it would appear that that will be the final score unless a miracle happens on the kickoff. Stranger things have happened at this level of football. There you see it. 8.2 left on the clock. Oh, it's offside this time against the defense. So they get another crack at it. There's a bad snap. The kick is up and it's good. And another flag at the line of scrimmage. It's offside against Oshawa. That'll be declined. So the point after is good. It is now 32-27. So 32-27, five points is the difference. And coming into this game, Jesse Card, I didn't think we'd have 59 points. Yeah, I really didn't know what to expect. I, I, we knew that they had some explosive players on, on both sides of the ball, but um, I think, you know, I, I do think that this could have been a higher score game, to be honest, if the defenses didn't play as well as they did. Yeah, you got that's a good point. So... I think, I, you know, at the end of the day, both of these teams have to be proud of themselves. This is where the Cumberland Panthers will be kicking off from. They're kicking off from the 40-yard line of the Oshawa Hawkeyes. So if they can get the Hawkeyes to touch the football and fall on it, they might have an opportunity for a play. Melsness gets set to kick this away. Waiting for the whistle. Here's Melsness. It's got to go 10. Ball's loose. And the Oshawa Hawkeyes have it. Play there. Roland Goff Lambert again. He's been wow. all over the field for the Hawkeyes in this one, and he makes the big play there to seal it. He might have just, uh, yeah, he might have just won a game for them. A lot of pressure there on those young men to uh, recover that ball. But good 5.9 seconds left here in the game. Oshawa is just going to... Uh, Take a knee. Kneel this one out and uh, <laughs> and start the celebration. Seaton takes a knee. This one is in the books in the Oshawa Hawkeyes. Are the 2022 Fall Cup Tier 1 U14 champions in the province of Ontario. And judging by the smoke that's going out on the field. The baby is going to be a boy. <laughs> there you go. They've got the pyrotechnics and uh, gonna look pretty good for the uh, <laughs> for the for the marketing clips here. But you know what? Overall, just a great game by both teams. Uh, the fact that it came down to that kick, where you know, separated by by uh, five points. I mean, it's a great finish, right? No team was ever out of this game, and it really provided a lot of explosive offensive plays, some good, solid defense. This is a complete football game, Dan. Oshawa had a tough one against Burlington to get here. The Cumberland Panthers had a much easier ride to this championship final, but when it came, when push came to shove, 
The Oshawa Hawkeyes won it. What a game. And you look at individual performances. You look at the defensive play of Isaac Kalubi Lucchini. You look at the offensive categories. David. 18 carries, 161 yards, and a touchdown. Trent Seaton, a quarterback, six carries, 205 yards, and three major scores. I was so impressed by him, Dan. Like, just the ability to have a, a quarterback that can do so many things like that. Uh, you know, it just it just provides you know it provides so many options for an offense. And in this in in this occasion today in this championship, who showed that he. He gave us a little bit of everything, you know. He, he, he threw some dimes. Uh, his receivers stood up, too. Like, I mean, they had some really great catches, some clutch plays. And, uh, yeah, for him to be able to put that many yards on the ground himself as a quarterback, they weren't going to be denied. Let's talk about something that perhaps might be a little bit more important, and that's the relationship that is building between the Ontario Football Association and TYSN. Yeah, I mean, it, it's great. Um uh, Football Ontario has, has been going through some some uh, transitions and, and restructuring. And really what they're trying to do is make football more inclusive, to bring in a lot more different uh, programming. But at the same time, at the at the elite levels like this and then, you know, into the summer football as well, I mean, they're really trying to make some uh, some better matchups that, that take advantage of all the different regions in, the, in, in Ontario. And this is an example of, of that paying off where Oshawa and Cumberland are coming together the end of the season to, to see each other and we're going to get some really good games some really good competition and these players players are going to be featured at a level that really is unprecedented at this level of competition up to this point well they featured great football featured all weekend long here at carlton university for this wonderful ontario foot fall football league championship the fall cup at what uh, a, a tremendous undertaking by everybody involved. And let's go down to field level and uh, see who wins the awards. Isaac Kalubi Lucchini, the defensive player of the game for the Oshawa Hawkeyes. Take your helmet off, kid. You got to get your picture taken. You know what? Really, I've been talking about him all game. Really impressed by this kid. The amount of the speed that this kid showed and, and, and you know, just the athleticism that's rare to get at a, in a body that's that big. Indeed. Now, offensive player of the game. Gavin Poirier with a great afternoon. Five carries, 47 yards, couple of touchdowns on the receiving end. Six catches for 96 yards over the course of the afternoon. And now for the most valuable player and of the game. From the Oshawa Hawkeyes, number five, Trent Seaton. Trent Seaton. Good choice. The most valuable player, three touchdowns, six carries, 205 yards, and he threw for a bunch today, too. What a day for the Oshawa Hawkeyes. They win it by a score of 32 27. They are the 2022 Fall Cup Tier 1 U14 champions for the province of Ontario. For Jesse Card and our entire TYSN crew, I'm Dan Mooney. Thanks so much for the company so long from the nation's capital. Once again,